Okay, let's talk about Heikenashi. First, let's take a second and let's talk about what is a Heikenashi video. If you translate Heikenashi uh, from Japanese, what it means is average, Heiken is average, Ashi is pace. So average pace, okay? Heiken Ashi is average pace. Now what does that mean? What that means is, is they take a standard candlestick you know, if we were to look at a regular daily chart of, let me remove these lines, but a regular daily chart of AT&T, it looks like this. A lot, a lot more back and forth, a lot more black candles in there, um, a, kind of disarray, right? The Heiken Ashi chart smooths all that out. Okay, it cleans up that jumpiness notice that there are no gaps while over on this chart we have gaps on this chart we have no gaps and the reason is is because they take two time periods and average them together to create the Heiken Ashi candle so let me explain that for just a second if if you use a daily chart they're going to take two day periods two one day periods and basically average them together to give you that candle. Okay, so one of the major benefits of Heiken Ashi is the smoothing effect of the Heiken uh, the way that smooths the trend and cleans things up. Is there anybody in here that has or would admit to the fact that they have a little problem in their trading with micromanagement? meaning that they're watching it all the time and the candle wiggles back and forth and you get real nervous and anxiety builds up and you micromanage your trade. End up stopping yourself out or doing something that causes you some problems in your trading. Now I want, I refuse to admit that, I want to show you that you can use the Heiken Ashi on any time frame. So I'm going to use the same AT&T chart and let's look at let's look at a 4-hour chart. The 4-hour chart has trends. It has support resistance. Everything that we see in um, every other chart, but it's cleaner. It's it's more um, organized because of the average of these candles. Now keep in mind that the Heiken Ashi candle on a four hour chart is averaging two four hour time periods. If you use an hourly chart, it's going to be the same thing and it's going to average two one hour time periods to get that smoothing effect in the chart. Now let me explain the candles themselves. I'm gonna go back to a daily here. When you take a look at a Heiken Ashi candle, notice that we have these, it's kind of odd if you look at candlestick charts all the time, that these candles right here, notice they have no tails, not one tail. When a Heiken Ashi candle has no tails, it indicates strong uptrend, okay? No tails indicating strong uptrend. When a Heiken Ashi candle has no wicks, it's indicating a strong downtrend. Okay, so you can use that information to stay with the trade. If you struggle with micromanagement, the Heiken Ashi candle can help smooth out that price action, help you avoid some of that emotion in the trade, okay? So when you see periods in the chart where we have wicks and tails coming together, that's a period of transition, okay? We don't know for sure if it's gonna to continue to move up or move down, but because we're, we're following this trend, we would be watching for that next potential move up in the trend. Okay, we're going to be trend followers on the Heiken Ashi just like anything else. And we're going to follow that very stable, clean chart as it moves up in these trends or moves down in a trend because it is very, very stable and pretty darn easy to follow. 
Okay, so how do we put together a trade for Hiking Ash? I'm gonna show you something. You guys have all seen me do the 3-8 trap. The 3-8 trap is what I use on a, on a standard chart. And I've changed it up here. It's very, very similar. It's almost identical. But because of the math involved in Hiking Ashy, okay, nope, I've not modified the Hiking Ashy settings at all. Hiking Ashy candles are just simply setting up the Hiking Ashy. I've made them one color, okay, using black. So I have a white background chart, black and white candles. It's very, very clear, very visual, very easy to see. No modifications to the candles at all. Okay, very, very simple. So what I've done to put together a pattern to help you identify these trades is I've added in on these charts a two exponential moving average and a six exponential moving average. If you guys have followed the um, three, eight trap, this will be very, very familiar to you, but because of the math, we have to do a little bit of you have to use a little bit different moving averages to get the same effect okay so with the three two exponential moving average and the six exponential moving average we create a trap and what is the trap well i'll explain this this way first if i were if this is that eight exponential moving average then what i want to see is i want to see that two exponential, excuse me, it's a six and a two, I keep saying eight, that six gets crossed up by the two. It's not the cross that we're looking for. This is not the trade. What we're looking for is that pullback that holds above the eight and then shows us that entry signal. Okay, that pullback. So this right here is almost the perfect entry signal into this Heiken Ashy strategy. We have that nice gradual pullback. It holds above the eight. Buyer step in here, and you guys can see you have a nice up move in that trade. And it follows the same right in here where we cross down and cross right back up. This would be the entry right here into that trade. We break through that resistance and we have that nice follow through to the upside. Okay, it's the two and the six, the two and the six exponential moving averages that make up that pattern. So step number one is we want to find stocks that are trending. How can we find stocks that are trending? Well, one of the things I do is I like to use a trending 17 EMA moving average, okay? That helps me find the trend. Now, if you guys don't know how to write a scan for this, it's actually fairly easy. I'm working with Ed right now and we're putting together a Heiken Ashy scan based on this strategy that all you'll have to do is turn it on and it's gonna find the charts setting up for this trade. Okay, it'll find them for you. So we're working on that right now. It's a little bit more difficult because of the math involved, but it's very, very similar to our regular 3-8 strategy. Now, one of the things that is a disadvantage or a hang up or a problem with Hike and Ashy is you don't get, because it's an average, you don't get the actual current price of the stock. So for example, it's showing on Hike and Ashy that our price is 37.60. If we go over here to this chart, you can see it's 37.38. That's the actual price of the stock. So that's one of the downfalls to the hike and ashy. If you decide to follow this strategy, either you have to get comfortable with that fact that the current prices that it's showing here because the average are not the exact price, or you have to adopt a strategy where you buy your stock based on your normal candlestick chart. But then to avoid the micromanagement manage it with that hike and ashy after you've entered the trade stay with the trade 
because of the hike in ashy. You can avoid that micromanagement because it's real easy in here as this moves up to just follow those candles. No tails, strong uptrend. Okay. And this works on any time frame. You know, for example, if you take a look at the diamonds chart and go to a 15 minute on that sell off today, how sweet and easy was that right there? Cross down through that 17 EMA. Right in here would have been a great short trade and just follow that position down on a 15 minute chart. It'll work just the same on any short term chart if you go even shorter than that. It's very, very clean and very, very simple. Now remember the short trade, like I said, the, the long trade, we take that six exponential, we want that three, or excuse me, two crossing up, pulling back, holding a support. And then we see buyers stepping in on the candlestick signal. The crossover is not the entry signal. It's the consolidation or the pullback that holds support that is the potential entry signal. This is our low risk entry where we can get our stop losses close. And that's, that's critical. We wanna have those low risk entry points. Okay, now the same is true in any down move. If we have the, the market moving down, we don't want the cross down. We want that rally back or consolidation that fails for our short trade. Okay, so you can look through this pattern here. Let me blow this up just a little tiny bit on this, on this chart. Notice that three excuse me, I keep saying three because I'm used to talking about the three A trap. The two crossing down below the eight, the six exponential moving average and then turning back into the 17, turning back up and then we get this failure. So the real simple entry into this trade would be just under this break right here and a stop loss just above. And then we trail that stop loss down following that trade. Doesn't matter the time frame. Remember, we can follow this trade in multiple setups. Same thing setting up right in here. We can catch that failure in here, stop loss just above. Same thing through here, catch that failure in here, stop loss just above. So we're looking for those low risk entry points and just following the trend, not trying to predict the trend, just following the trend. Uh, Bob, the reason I'm using the two and the six is because the, of the math of the Heiken Ashy candle, the two and the six best replica, replicates the three eight trap on a Heiken Ashy. Okay. It's just because of the mathematics of how the candles are calculated. Okay. Um, what I would do some, on something like that, Stella, is if I were going to follow an hourly chart, I would just manage the hourly chart. Don't overcomplicate it with two different time frames because you get that contradictory into information that can cause you problems. So no, when you see the strong downtrend candles, just follow them. Just move your stop loss, adjusting that trade down as you see fit, as this stock moves down until, boom, you're out of the trade. Or until you've hit profit targets in the position. Okay. So now let's take a look at the consolidations in these charts. And I'm gonna go back to a daily and I'm gonna, let's just pick something like uh, Visa here on a daily chart. I'm gonna go back here when it was trending really nicely. During this period back in here, I want you to notice that we have the same pullback opportunities that we have in a standard candlestick chart. So we move up, remember this isn't the trade, we're not trying to catch this here. We're getting that cross back over we're looking for that pullback that holds above the eight, excuse me, the six, holds above the six, and then we're looking for that entry in here. So right in here, see these four candles? 
that are really small, really tight. One of the great things about Hike and Ashy is that the consolidations are extremely concise. They're extremely concise. Okay, so we can hold this in here, set a price alert when we see those tight consolidations, and we wait for the entries into those trades. Find those areas in here where we would break out and just follow those entries into the trades. When we get those tight transition periods, those periods where we get those wicks and tails, that nice tight transition, we're looking for that breakout. So the pop out of the box and the PBO work here just exactly the same way as it does in a, in a standard candlestick chart. The two patterns that we trade most of the time. Okay. Um, Rick, I'm not sure what your question is. You are out in the change of color of the candle. Um, oh, are you are you saying you exit the trade at the change of the, of the color of the candle? Well, certainly, if you have not reached your profit target, remember, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through how I plan a trade anyway. I'm going to go through how I plan a trade in a position like this. And remember, I am always planning a trade to a potential goal. Okay, always planning a trade to a potential goal. So let's think about this position. If we were going to enter, say we're watching this trade back here in, in um, Visa, and we see this price action that's showing us this nice little pullback. We're holding in here. We're looking pretty good. And we want to find an entry into this trade. So as this is forming and it's holding up, what I want to do is I want to place a price alert in here. And then I want to take a look at where, if I enter a trade here, I want to calculate how much my risk is. If I place a stop loss underneath these tails, by the way, that's important. It can't be at the tails. It must be underneath the tails. Okay, that's where the price support is showing up. And notice how concise it is in a Heike and Ashy candle. Okay, we tighten up that price action in these candles because of the way they're calculated. So we tighten up that stop. Okay, we enter this trade and you guys know that what I'm always going to do, I will not enter a position ever, whether it be a stock trade or an option trade. I will not enter a position until I know how much risk there is in dollars to my stop loss. I will not enter a trade until I know how much risk there is. Okay, so that's the first calculation you have to make. What's my risk? Where will I stop out? You need to know that before you enter. You also need to know what your tolerance to risk is. If you don't know how much you're willing to risk on a trade, I get this all the time. Well, should I just do 5%? No, because if you do 5% on a stock that's $171 versus 5% on a stock that's $7, big difference in the risk. Huge, massive. Okay. These are Heike and Ashy candles. The whole class is about Heike and Ashy candles. The Heike and Ashy strategy. Okay. Uh, just the same way, Rick, that you had set any alert. Place a price alert across your chart. I want to be alerted when the price crosses up through that Heike and Ashy candle. That simple, boom, it's done. Okay, that's all you have to do. Place that price alert, wait for the trade. All right, 
then we're going to follow this along in the same manner. So we have our entry price that we're entering into that trade. We have our exit price where we're going to stop out of this trade. What's the next step? We have to know what our trade goal is. You know, I've been working this over and over and over with the members of Rightway Options here lately. How many here from Rightway Options are willing to say that having that calculation, knowing a trade goal and exiting, exiting the trade once you've reached your trade goal is actually making for good trading? You're, you're making money that way. You're not allowing greed to get in the way of the trade. So you need to have some kind of goal. What are you reaching for in this trade? Now you don't wanna be, you know, silly ridiculous or anything like that. If you're trading this as a stock trade, it may be 5%. If you're trading this as an, as an option trade, your goals may be 15, 20%, okay? And then you start figuring out how you're going to close those trades. So say, for example, you buy this as an option position and you're looking for a 20% gain. You've got three contracts in this position and you get that 20% gain comes in. We hit it right here. Boom. You need to be taking some profits. Okay. You cannot lose money in the market if you get comfortable taking profits. If you continuously always try to squeeze a trade, I just want more money, more money, more money out of every trade. How many of you will admit you've had good money in trades, nice profits in trades, and turned them into losers? Wanting more money. Remember, what we have to do is we have to be conscious of the idea that our job is to make money not to get rich quick our job is to make consistent money so we have to put in those plans this is what we want to do now if i had a three contract trade on here this is exactly how i would trade this i'm i get my goal up here around 20 percent. i would close two contracts and then i just start after the end of every one of these candles gets formed, I would place my stop loss. I adjust my stop loss, just my stop loss, just my stop loss, just my stop loss, until I've either reached a point where I, hey, it's, I'm getting nervous because I've got so much money in the trade, or the stock reverses and stops me out. Okay. Now, one thing that's really important to remember is the reason we're thinking about doing this is because of the smoothness of the Heiken Ashi candle. You know, one of the best purposes for Heiken Ashi is to help you avoid the micromanagement of the trade. To allow the trade to develop, to allow the trade to work. To avoid that micromanagement that we tend to do because we get nervous on these daily whips and stuff that happens in these stocks, I can actually smooth that out, cleans up that chart for those potential trades. Now this works up, up candles, down candles, it really doesn't matter. Take a stock like Roku, could you imagine getting short this trade here? Failing underneath here, getting short that trade. Stock goes from 140 down to 105, a 40 point loss. And all you have to do is follow that trade down, taking profits along the way. Same thing is true on the upside. Imagine this move where we get this crossover here, this nice little pull back in here set a price alert in this trade enter that position and look at these candles just easy to follow this trend up all the way up locking in profits as you go okay
Uh, remember, Trader, the wicks and tails in, in a Heiken Ashy candle are different. Okay? When we are in a strong uptrend, there are no tails on the candles. When we are in a strong down, there are no wicks on the candles. It's only when we hit these transition points that we actually have wicks and tails coming into play. Okay. So just follow the candles. Don't overthink this, guys. This is actually very simple. If you want to trade this on a shorter term time frame, look at it on a four hour. Could you make money following this down? Do you have to micromanage this on the way down? I mean, seriously. And does it matter if you enter this trade and it's 25 cents difference in what the live price is when you take a trade like this to the downside? Does it matter? No, you're making big bucks. Okay. Big bucks. So remember, the Heiken Ashy candle, this candle is forming. It's also calculating from this candle. So what happened in Roku here at the end of the day? Well, if we look at a regular price chart of four hours, you're going to see what happened here. The stock made that reversal. Okay, these two candles right here were averaged together. These two last periods were averaged together. We end up with a candle that looks like this. A transition candle. Okay, so pick your time frame. Pick the time frame you want to trade and then set up your strategy of how you're going to follow this. Can you guys see yourself? Is anyone in here seeing themselves as being able to see this breakdown very easily entering that trade and following that trade down? This is in one hour on Roku. Do you even see that as possible? How simple it is to see the patterns themselves and utilize them to your favor? Here's an hourly upside. Okay. So we're going to first identify a trend. If we're looking for an up move, we're looking for that six exponential moving average being crossed over by the three, excuse me, by the two, the two pulling back to hold as support. We don't want to see a cross back down and a cross back up. What is this? Chop. Right here, chop. Up and down. We don't want to get caught in chop. We want to find that failure, that rally back to resistance that shows continued failure. By the way, this happened pretty simply to, it's very simple to follow that trade. Okay, so we want that cross up that proof that it's going to hold and then we wait for that entry candle to the upside okay if we're looking for that down move we're going to wait we want that cross down that push up or consolidation and then that failure candle that shows continued pressure to the downside and then we follow those trades down without a whole lot of micromanagement. I mean, how hard is it to every hour look at your chart and adjust your stop loss? Pretty darn simple, isn't it? 
How hard is it to see these beautiful consolidations? Hike and Ashy consolidations are stellar because of that averaging effect. Not only support and resistance, it's easy to see trend, isn't it, Frank? Now, the only reason I've got that 17 in there is to help us see trend. When price is above the 17 and we continue to move up, that 17 is showing us trend. Showing us that we're on the right side of the trade. Should we be considering any long trade if the price is below the 17? No. Yeah, we shouldn't be. Should we be considering any long trade if the price is below the 17? No, those are our failures. So we've got an entire concise package here that sets up with this hike and ashy in any conceivable time frame that you want to trade with a very simple, simple set of rules entry into the trade we're patient and wait for those trades i mean look at this this is hours how many hours did this go sideways right here setting this up is it really hard to see that and is it is it terribly hard to place an alert right here and say when it crosses down through there let me know pretty simple right we just have to identify the trend, identify the potential that this is just consolidating or rallying back up toward its resistance point, and we wait for the failure pattern to occur. Don't predict it, wait for it to happen, and then follow that trade. Okay? On any time frame, on any stock. So it's a very simple strategy with a set of rules that keeps you on the right side of the trade. We know by looking at this chart when the stock is bullish and when it's bearish. We know by looking at this chart, we can see very clearly just by the color of the candles that we've switched over from a bull run to a bear run. And we can look real quickly and say, is this a strong bear run? because these have no wicks on these candles. Is this a strong bull run because there are no tails on these candles? Okay. With a hike in Ashy, Rick, oh, we'll just look at the price action. Where would you rather enter? Would you rather enter when it crosses down through here or wait until it's already moved down when your stop loss is here? Because of the averaging effect on these, on these candles, you want to take the signal when it occurs. Okay, because if you wait for another period, remember, you're trading an hourly chart, that's a two hour wait on that trade by that time down here all you've done is increase your risk to your stop loss by doing that so remember these are averaged candles we want to enter those when those occur we don't want to be waiting we don't want to be micromanaging those entries now when should we not take the trade the question I think you're asking is, when should I not take the trade? Okay. Well, when should we not take the trade on this? Eight crosses back above the 17 and then starts to pull back. That's not our setup, right? We want the eight staying below the 17, the three staying below the eight, and we're waiting for that cross down, that failure point. Heiken Ashi will disguise, yes, Heiken Ashi will disguise gaps.
Okay. But if you go back and here's the, here's the thing I would ask you about this. Um, no, I mean the six and the two. Six exponential, two exponential, and a 17 exponential. Yeah, sorry, six and a two, apologize. Okay. Yes, right now you have wicks and tails. What is this? This is a transition. There's no trade here. There's no failure point. There's no rally point. Now we're staying below the 17. If we think this is going to move on down, wouldn't we want to place a price alert here and wait for that candle? If it forms like this, great. We take that trade south. We just follow our trend. It just keeps going down. Let's follow it down. Okay. And here's the other thing. If you place that, that alert and wait for that trade, we're not going to micromanage this. We're not going to anticipate this. If the stock happens to go up from here, who cares? That's not the trade we were looking for. Now we have to wait for the crossover and the pullback, right? We have to take that transition down to a transition up and wait for the next entry into the trade. It's not chasing these moves. It's here. Now, the question was about disguising gaps. If you look at Roku here, what you're going to find is this was a big gap right in here. That's one of the reasons why we don't want to chase the crossover. We want to wait for those entries in concise price action. Okay, wait for that concise price action. Don't be chasing trades. Don't get into that whole thing, oh my gosh, I'm missing out. Because we know when a stock gaps or moves up sharply, it's almost always going to relax and pull back. And we're waiting for these comfortable entries in here. Those are our winning trades. Those are our easy to win trades. Okay. Terry, no. If you're going to follow the hike in Ashy, if you're going to manage by the hike and ashy, manage by the hike and ashy. Don't jump back and forth between standard candlesticks and these candlesticks. Is it hard to see where the stop losses should be in this run? Is it difficult? If price breaks down below these levels, do we want to be in this trade? If we entered this position on this breakout here, we enter this trade and we place our stop loss right underneath this level. Did we get hurt on that position? No. Follow it here. Did we get hurt on that position? No. Did we get hurt on this position? No. Don't overthink this. What you have to do is get comfortable with looking at these candles and just managing the trades based on what you see. If you always are jumping back and forth, it's going to make you crazy. Okay. So just pick a time frame. Do whatever you want, whatever time frame that you want to trade with these. Heck, if we if we change this to a five minute chart, can you trade a five minute chart with the Heiken Ashi? Do you guys see the great long signal right here? Here's our cross. Here's our hold. Here's our entry, our stop loss right underneath there, winning trade. Not that hard, right? How about a short trade? Can we find a short trade in this chart? This is a five minute hike in Ashy. Are these patterns that hard to see? We break down below this support. 
stop loss goes right above these candles, follow that trend down. Not too difficult, right? So does it work on intraday? It absolutely does. In fact, there's a person out there that claims he is the greatest option trader in the world. The greatest option trader in the world. And he uses Hike and Ashy candles exclusively. That's all he does. Trades a Hike and Ashy candle, keeps it simple and follows the chart. Not that difficult to do. You don't have to be any kind of rocket scientist to figure this out. Now you can micromanage this to death. You can overthink this to death. You can screw things up so bad by overdoing it. Okay. Just learn to follow the chart. Now, here's the thing. I'm not telling you guys that you have to switch to hike and ashy candles. But there was a big group of folks in here. <laughs> trader X, the best trader in the world. <laughs> in, um, our gate, why they're not more popular than they are. You know, the thing is, I think they're more popular than you believe they are. And the reason I say that is I did a class on the Hike and Ashy candles. Okay. And that video is now headed toward 50,000 views. The biggest, the biggest video I've ever had. Okay. I think they're more popular than people want to believe they are because they're so simple to read and simple to use and they can avoid or help you um, remove that micromanagement problem that so many people in here said, I have a problem with that. Okay. So if we can get comfortable with following these trains Pick a time frame, pick a strategy that we are, uh, that strategy time frame, and then just follow these positions. Don't predict them, don't chase them, don't micromanage them. Just enter those trades and take your profits when you're supposed to take it according to your rules. Um, Angel, you are exactly correct. And that's why I say it's important to know what your goal is in the trade prior to entering. We have to plan to take profits. We've all been burned. I mean, just type a Y in here. If you've ever been in a trade that had a winning profit, a nice winning profit, and you finally closed the trade when it was a loser. I mean, everybody who's traded has had that problem. Okay, that's why we need to plan a trade and have a plan on how we're going to exit positions. Okay. Dolores, no, not on the price of this what your goal is. What are you trying to make? Let me ask you this, Doris, Dolores, can you go broke making a 10% profit on every trade? That's right. You can't. Do you realize with an option trade, if you entered this right in here, you'd probably have a 10% profit before that candle's finished? And you just keep doing it over and over and over, waiting for that next trade. Enter this position, 10% profit. Enter this position, 10% profit. You just following the trades. Enter this position, 10% profit.
Here's the thing that people that screws people up though. Well, if I take this trade at 10% profit, it's 50 bucks. Okay. I get this from a lot of folks. They'll tell me I have a $5,000 account. I can't take a $50 profit. It's not worth it to take a $50 profit. What if you could take, anybody think you could find a stock that could make you $50 three times a week? Anybody think that's possible? Looking at these Heiken Ashi, could you find three stocks that could make you 50 bucks? Any stock that's, that has the potential to buy and just move a little bit. Okay, three winning trades at $50 a week times four weeks is $600 a month times 12 is $7,200 a year. How many in here right now could say that you had $7,200 in profits last year? Okay, if you have that small account, let's say you traded that in a $10,000 account. I get this all the time. Well, $10,000, that's not gonna be anything. What's a $7,200 gain in a $10,000 account at the end of the year? What's your percentage? 72%. That's right. A 72% gain on the year because you were willing to take $50 profits and just continued to take them. That's how small accounts grow to big accounts. With consistency of taking profits, not trying to swing for the fence and get rich quick. That's the dumb money. That's the money that gets cut out of this market every single day. Okay. That's right, Tim. So have that reasonable goal instead of always reaching out there for the home run. The home runs will happen on their own. How many of you have ever been into a trade, you got into a position the next morning it gaps up? Everyone in Right Way Options knows what I do when that occurs. Guess what I do? I take the profit. I walk away. I don't try to squeeze it for more. I tr don't sit there and stare at it during the morning watching it fluctuate around, panicking that it might lose a little bit. When the market opens, I take the profit. I move on to the next trade. I got lucky. Now find the next trade. Don't micromanage. Avoid being greedy and take those consistent gains. You know, think about that. If you work, if you have, and everyone should do this, you should have a notebook in front of you that has a win column and a lose column. Okay, how do you avoid having lose column trades? Be consistent and disciplined to take the right trade at the right time. Don't anticipate. Don't second guess. Take the trade that fits you when it occurs. Don't break the rules. Stay consistent with your trading. Be mechanical, not emotional. This is my trade. This is what I do. I repeat that trade over and over and over. Okay. Every single time you take a trade, you have the potential to take a loss. There's no way to have a no lose strategy. Just no way to do it. Okay. So how do we prevent more losers 
after we're already in profit. Be willing to take the gain. Be willing to take the gains. Okay. The LTA scanner is web-based. There is a program that you do download. It's a very, very small program. By the way, LTA, guys, if you're brand new here, it stands for Live um, Trading Alerts. Okay, it's a scanner we use. And, you know, so for example, it's always bringing up potential trades. Okay. It's always populating. I don't have to do anything. It runs automatically. I open the window, okay, and this these things populate trades. So for example, here's a window. And by the way, there's a lot more information in here that I don't show. But in that window, it's populating trades all day long that are setting up in the strategy that I have here up to alert. It's telling me these trades are putting themselves together for a potential and all I have to do is double click and I go straight to the chart and find out if that strategy is setting up. When you look at the BA chart on an hourly chart using the Heiken Ashi, does anyone see a potential trade setting up? What would we do with this chart? Place a price alert and wait for the entry to occur. That's it. Wait for the entry to occur. Uh, David, I don't use the TC2000 scanner anymore. Writing the code for a hike and Ashy is not simple. Okay. The guy who does all of our, our code writing here is pretty darn close to brilliant. And remember, the live trading alert scanner is live. You don't have to run this scan. Every time you open up the LTA scanner, all of the windows, all of the scans that you have up automatically run. You don't have to think about running it and sort through a list. It's automatically running and populating these live. Okay. So if you want a Hike and Ashy code and you don't know how to write the programming, you're going to have to go get some help or pay somebody to help you because it is a big string of text of calculations for the hike and ashy and then that's just the candle patterns then you add in some moving averages or any other indicator and it becomes a very long code to calculate hike and ashy okay So the live trading alert scanner, everyone, is, is a great tool. And we, we don't have this Hike and Ashy strategy built in yet, but I bet we will within a couple hours. Can't tell you, trader, I don't use it. I don't use it for my charting. So I can't tell you. Every charting program is going to be just a little bit different. That's a question for Thinkorswim. And if you try to write a Hike and Ashy scan code for Thinkorswim, man, buckle up. It's going to take you a month of Sundays and probably two or three good coders to make it happen. Okay.
then if you're not looking for overnight trading al why would you trade a four hour why would you buy a four hour candle in the afternoon if you that you have to hold to the next day why would you trade a four hour chart what would be the point in doing that if you don't want to hold overnight you got to go to a shorter time frame because these are two hour average candles so go to a two hour and just be done with it or go to an hour and just be done with it close it out don't make this harder than it is okay So what I wanted to do in this video tonight is really hone in on a strategy that works. It's simple to understand. It's simple to set up. I would say a four hour would be more for swings. And when we get into a really good, comfortable market, they're going to be fantastic. Right now, does anybody feel like we have a really good, comfortable market? It's all, it's just all back and forth. We can't get more than a day or two in one direction on anything. It's a mess. So we almost have to go to the shorter term time frame to find good quality trades. Okay. Now, by the way, here, let me do this. I'm going to go to a daily chart and I'm going to go back here in time just a little bit does anyone see back here in June when we started to rally could you have traded the diamonds chart with the hike and ashy does it work on the daily when the markets working for us yeah it does we're not whipping around we're getting good price action signals into these trades okay so just go back and test this guys one of the things that that um, every trader has to do, and this is something you have to do. I can't do it for you. You have to go back and look at this strategy and say, well, geez, would this have worked? Could I have entered that trade and made money here and here and here? Does it work? Does it work in the short side? I mean, how many different charts do you need to look at to determine, hey, this works pretty well. Now take a look at this over here in 2017 where we had this extremely smooth market. Anybody have trouble trading that? When we get in that extremely smooth market, when the market really trends, look at the money that can be made here. just following the trend and I'm gonna get those questions yeah but what about the gap up that day so what did this work did you make money yeah but what about the gap down so what did this work can you make money with this chart by following this chart don't overcomplicate this or overthink about this Follow the price pattern. Prove to yourself looking at how many charts you need to, to look at to prove that this works. And then establish a strategy, establish a set of rules, and follow it. Okay. Oh, Gwen, it will. Yeah, absolutely. What Trader X says, it will. Trust me, this will not last forever. There will be a period when things turn around. Just look right over here. We had this ugly mess that occurred here, December and January, and then look what happened. It turned around and there was great trading. It happens every time. What if you trade long-term charts? Anybody in here like position trading? Take a look at Visa, and I'm not going to go to a full weekly chart. A weekly chart is averaging two weeks together, and I think that's a little unfair because it's so smooth.
Let's make this like a two or three day chart. Can you guys make money with that chart? I want you to notice these entries here. Entry into this trade, and this trade went from February to a stop out in May. And these are all over the market, guys. In Hike and Ashy, I would never probably look at a monthly chart, a JP. And the reason would be because it's an average of two months together. That's why I didn't even do a weekly chart. I just went to a three day here. I'm basically averaging just a little over a week. If I could do a two and a half day, that's what I would do. To smooth that out you know if you change this to a monthly <clears throat> I mean can can you guys make money with that chart I mean if you want to trade monthlies and are willing to stay in those trades I, honestly can you make money with that chart but I want you to notice something here JP this is the monthly of visa this is the daily of visa there's downside in that chart. Not too many people are gonna be willing to hold that. Unless you've entered it properly down in here and held it all the way through, hey, a little bit of throw back and forth doesn't really bother you. But I would go to the same place if I traded this on a three day. Is it gonna be really difficult to enter this trade? exit this trade up here. This trade goes from sometime in June and we're out sometime in the end of July. Early June to the end of July, two months in that run. This one um, from February, early on in February, and you're out over here somewhere in May, early part of May. I mean, how hard is that? No, if I'm going to be swing trading, a normal standard swing trade, because it's an average, all right? It's an average of two candles. I'm going to be looking at a four-hour chart. That four-hour chart is averaging two four-hour periods together, basically the entire day, to give us these trends. Okay? So I'm just following the trends and the patterns. Remember, the entry signals are very simple. Don't overthink of them. Just follow the trends, okay? Trade the chart. Not that hard to do. Follow the trends, trade the chart. All right? If you, if you really muck this up, and here's what people do, we overthink this stuff, don't we, as traders? How many in here would admit, when you find something that works, what do you always try to do? Tweak it, add something to it, change it, overcomplicate it. That's right. If it works, don't fix it. If it works, stay with the patterns, stay with the trades that are showing you those patterns and let the chart do its job. Let the price action do its job. Stop trying to micromanage it. Okay, TLT. Well, TLT has been trending on about anything. There's the daily. There's a four hour. Here's an hourly. Man, I mean, trade after trade after trade, upside and downside. 
It doesn't matter. Trade trade the VXX. Does it work on the VXX? Gee, it sure looks like it. So go through the charts that you want to trade. Find the patterns. Prove to yourself that you could follow this and then write out a trading plan. Guys, I'm going to challenge you today. Write down your trading plan and be disciplined to those rules. Okay. Annie, I, I described that earlier in the in the video, in the, in the class. I have a profit target in mind that I'm going to take a profit in. So if you have a multiple contract position or a multiple share position, make sure you take some profits at your goal. From there, manage this manually, manage this with a trailing stop. Whatever you want to do, just don't let that trade turn negative. I don't have a single trade that I take from my entry that I know where I'm going to be taking profits if it moves up there. And I never take a trade that I don't think has the potential to move to my profit targets. So again, if I'm in a three contract trade on my entry, my plan is probably going to be selling two at that profit target. Maybe it's around 20% with an option trade, 15%. And then I might work that last contract to trail it and see what it'll do. But I'm always going to be pulling profits out. It's really hard to lose money, guys, if you get comfortable taking profits. Stop trying to hit home runs every trade. Nobody does. Hit a whole bunch of base hits and be successful at it. Okay. If I were trading just single contract trades, by the way, I taught a person a strategy like this using just standard candlesticks. They had a $25,000, I'm going to tell this story and then we're done. They had a $25,000 account. They lost money on this. They were at $8,700 when they got a hold of me for some count for some coaching. We used a setup very similar to this. The entire plan was to try and make $50 a trade and then close the trade. Made $50. It wasn't a guess. It wasn't anything. It made $50, closed the trade. It took nine months for them to trade this $8,700 back to $25,000. Coaching, yeah, sorry, coaching. It's kind of counseling. Okay. And the reason is because they got really good at taking profits. Consistently taking profits. You know, Mike Peterson likes to say in the room, is it easier to find a trade that's going to make you $1,000 or 10 trades that are going to make you $100? It's easier. How many of you would say, I, when I enter a trade, I'm almost always in profit initially in the position? The majority of the time, because you're doing the technical analysis, you're in profit. But we let those turn into trade, went losers because we refuse to take the profits. We don't have a planned exit where we're going to exit, take that gain, and move on. Okay, I mean, think about this right here, guys. If you entered this short trade right in here, entered this short trade with an option, you would have probably 15 to 20% in that trade 
right down here. Take some profits. If you entered it here, 15 to 20 percent, so it's only going to be about that far. Trail the rest of it down. Repeat that trade over and over and over, and guess what happens to your account? Your account starts to consistently grow because you're consistently taking profits. Okay? Guys, I really hope this you found this helpful, and I really want to challenge you whether you either do this with a Heiken Ashi or you use another strategy. I challenge you to write down your strategy, have a plan, a set of goals, know your tolerance to risk, and then become disciplined to that plan. Okay?